We have, in the past, explored some truly remarkable ancient ruins that can be found within Russia. Some of the largest blocks to be found anywhere on Earth can be found within this enormous country. Along with many other intriguing and spectacular finds still left to be publicly documented, most notably within the notoriously hostile and extremely eerie Ural Mountain Range, a place long rumored to be the home of the elusive Snow Yeti. Left abandoned for untold millennia, laying within a Siberian lake far from modern civilization, rests one of the most scientifically baffling sites to be found anywhere on planet Earth. Claimed to be only a mere 1300 years old, yet any compelling evidence to back up such predictable claims by certain bodies within historical academia are not forthcoming. Additionally, they harvest no real logical explanation for the site's clear antiquity, reason for abandonment, or indeed construction. It seems with very little to go on, certain groups within constrictive learning practices would like the world to believe that this perplexing site was built a mere 1,000 or so years ago. Known as Por Bajin, it is a 3.5 hectare artificial man-made island located in a remote, unnamed Siberian lake between the Sayan and Altair Ranges, about 3,800 kilometers from Moscow near the Mongolian border. The site was first discovered in 1891, and the purpose of the island has still not been explained over a century later. It is still a mystery for, quote, experts to explain, although they still strongly insist it was constructed no more than 1,400 years ago. An in-depth archaeological exploration took place in 2007, with archaeologists discovering clay tablets of human feet and faded colored drawings on the plaster. These were subsequently used to date the site to quite recently within antiquity, allowing experts to say that the island was built during the period of the Uyghur Khaganate between 744 and 840 AD. However, they severely lack any clear explanation as to what their motives would have been for constructing such a fortress, in such a solitary place so far from trading routes, their own civilization, or indeed anything else of interest. As with many other confusing and as yet unexplained ruins around the world, the archaeological strata most prefer to academia's currently upheld story in regard to chronological events will always be preferred, and the controversial and often strong evidential datings are ignored or destroyed. Is Por Bajin a far older and once far more advanced site than we are led to believe? With the advances in technology allowing us to venture further and further into the wilderness, it is only a matter of time before a self-funded, inquisitively minded individual gets a chance to take a really good look at this amazing place. Our last video covered the astonishing ancient city found in Sri Lanka, which was somehow built atop an enormous rock formation. Known as Lion's Rock, it is a testament to the ancients' capabilities and determination. And our next location is just as incredible. Known as Nan Madal, it is an ancient site located within the middle of an ocean near to the Mariana Trench. What makes Nan Medal so incredible is the fact that the entire city was once built upon the water. An entire series of artificial islands, canals, and fortified city limits. What's more, the entire location is built entirely from enormous blocks of basalt and coral. Built using a unique set of sophisticated techniques, not found anywhere else on Earth. The site's supposed original name was Saun Nan Lang, or Reef of Heaven, and according to Gene Ashby, in his book Pompeii, an Island Argosy, the ruined city is one of today's greatest archaeological enigmas, and is sometimes actually called Atlantis, or the Eighth Wonder of the World, or even the Venice of the Pacific. According to academia, Nan Medal was the ceremonial and political seat of the Saudalur dynasty, which unites the islands of Pompeii's estimated 25,000 people until as recently as 1628. 
set apart between the main island of Pompeii and Tenwen Island. It was a scene of human activity as early as the 1st or 2nd century AD, with the perplexing megalithic architecture apparent only beginning in 1200 AD. However, comprising of almost 100 stone and coral-built platforms atop artificial islands separated by narrow channels, enclosed by an outer seawall, Nan Madal is an engineering marvel. A truly mammoth undertaking that, yet despite the enormity of the undertaking at such a distant time within history, there exists no records as to when, or most importantly how, Nan Madal was ever built. Additionally, there is no evidence of any quarries on any of the nearby islands or indeed the reefs surrounding the site. Where did these enormous rocks come from? How were they transported there? And how, or indeed why, was the site constructed on top of the reef? For a technologically primitive people, apparently placed a mere 1500 years in the past, to somehow have created this entire artificial floating city made from enormous pieces of coral and basalt foundation, using techniques apparently not known prior to construction, yet somehow successfully constructing buildings that have lasted well over millennia, seems a rather ridiculous and extremely unlikely premise. Additionally, to have no evidence of a quarry anywhere to be found makes the whole complex that much more confusing. The total area of the enclosure is around 75 hectares. Walls were as high as 15 meters and up to 5 meters thick. The average weight of each stone is 5 tons, with some weighing as much as 50 tons. With an estimated total weight of columnar basalt making up the city's construction at around 750,000 metric tons, Nan Madal is undoubtedly an astonishing place. We have, on many occasions, covered the many astonishing ancient rock-cut structures which can be found virtually all over the world. Megalithic creations, often carved from a single piece of stone or dry-built, constructed out of impossibly huge stones, and recently, we have touched upon the more impressive stone sites to be found, such as the horseshoe-shaped piece of granite, decided upon by someone or something as the base rock for what many perceive to be the most impressive artistic wonder on Earth. A structure named after a mountain, we also suspect, has witnessed extreme excavation work in the past, as did the Giza Plateau. Indeed, although little known, acres of solid natural stone were excavated from the Giza Plateau as the foundation bed for the most incredibly elaborate pyramid found anywhere. Who could have accomplished such gargantuan tasks over 3,000 years ago? But I digress. Our topic of this video is a wonderful gem hidden upon our Earth. In fact, the largest and seemingly most impressive of them all. So impressive, in fact, a number of individuals, specialists, tasked with the investigation of this astonishing structure and the construction thereof. Some for over 12 years of extensive investigation have been resigned to the conclusion alien influences could have only been responsible for the completion of the structure at such an ancient time in our history. Known as the Lost City of Angkor, this due to its extended duration hidden beneath several thousand highly established tree roots. It was once the capital city of the Khmer Empire, which flourished from approximately the 9th to 15th centuries. However, a similar theory can be applied regarding the Khmer Empire's success to the ancient Egyptian civilization's notorious longevity. It is, of course, a possibility that we have covered regarding Giza before, that these ancient cultures partook in probably the earliest form of graffiti, presumably ordered by the current rulers, to add their own deity depictions to these already ancient and astonishing structures. It would be a logical decision for a successful leader of an ancient group of people, namely self-declared Hindu monarch Jayavarman II, who also declared himself a universal monarch and a god-king, to make the decision to claim such mastery as their own creation. When visitors entered the area, they would immediately assume that your group had constructed this awe-inspiring temple, undoubtedly intimidating 
and additionally giving incredible security to your people, as the temple even possessed an impressive moat, an instant advantage over all surrounding tribes. Not hewn from a single rock, but created using no less impressive techniques, undoubtedly requiring the same perfection in artistic ability as Kailash Temple. Five million blank stone blocks were perfectly laid upon one another, slowly forming a template. These stones were then individually and perfectly carved into the astonishing wonder we see before us today. As the blocks were pre-laid, this means whoever the sculptors were had only one chance to get the carvings right, a feat they seemingly accomplished. Who built the lost city of Angkor? Kailash? The pyramids? Baalbek, etc., etc.? The list of utterly perplexing sites grows every day, but thankfully, so does our knowledge. Although much of the world has focused their attention and awe upon the unquestionably advanced ancient feet of the ancient pyramids of Giza, Mexico, along with most of southern America, also possesses many equally astonishing feats of a now lost ancient civilization. Gigantic cities perfectly created to house those who built them, along with what is probably the most significant of ruins, now known as the modern Mexico City, it was once the origins of the settlement itself. Although the age is unknown, this magnificent and mysterious place was once known as Tenochtitlan, quoted as the Venus of the Aztecs and ancient capital of the Aztec Empire. It initially started as an isolated settlement, created on natural islands within the Lake Texcoco. What makes it special, however, is that it eventually expanded out, with the now lost builders of the site constructing an entire city's foundations, complete with giant pyramidal structures upon artificially constructed floating islands. It contained the Palace of Montezuma II, said to have once consisted of over 300 rooms as well as hundreds of other temples of considerable proportions. It was eventually destroyed by the Spanish conquistadors under Hernán Cortés in 1521. At the time, this amazing floating city had an estimated population of 400,000 people. It eventually spread over onto neighboring lakes and also the land surrounding them, covering a span of five square miles. It was connected to the mainland by several causeway dikes that terminated in smaller lakeside urban communities. Along with the many pyramid temples, the original construction is still highly debated, clearly due to its inexplicable architectural design and the clear advanced capabilities of its creator, one which does not coincide with the modern paradigms of history. The great market in the barrio of Tlatelolco was reported by the Spaniards to have had at least 60,000 buyers and sellers on the main market day. How did a claimed primitive culture create such an astonishing artificial island city, in addition to the ancient pyramids which surrounded it? It was undoubtedly a place which we would have found highly compelling.